You've just heard there the leftist coalition pulling off this upset, Le Pen's party coming in third. What just happened here? Was this a rejection of Macron or a last minute embrace? I would say it was a um, it was a bit of both. Um, what was really important is that you had a number of alliances, even between the Macron party and the new popular front, which is the left alliance, to, to what the French call put up a barrage against the national front. You had to make uh, the national rally, as it's now called. You, you had some really quite extraordinary moments when Edouard Philippe, who's potentially seen as Macron's successor in the presidential party, a pro-business, centre-right politician, came out in his constituency and said, I'm going to vote for the Communist Party today because I do not want the a national rally to get in. So what happened is that France came together and said, we do not want... Uh, a, a political party which is on the far right, which has roots in the Second World War, which has roots in France's Vichy government. So you had people who normally hate each other actually come together and say, we want to have the Republican front victorious in these elections. So Macron is going to remain on as president, of course, but he is going to be uh, sharing power with the new prime minister that he's likely to name from this leftist coalition. Do we know who the potential candidates are, who the potential contenders are? Because ultimately, that's what market investors need to understand uh, in order to exactly price the implications for um, not just fiscal policy, but uh, also the uh, agenda of the government moving forward here. Yeah, this is the, the, the really the big unknown. So um, the, the, the left alliance has ruled out having the sort of firebrand former Trotskyist Jean-Luc Mélenchon from Unsubmissive France as a prime minister. He, he did seem to be positioning himself as a prime minister wannabe uh, last night, but it is very unlikely that he will there will be enough support for him. He would be a pretty big disaster for the markets. He would send a very a negative um, image out of France because he has, you know, he's, he's basically what you would call the far left. Now, there are some names that are floating around. The, the former um, president, Francois Hollande, was re-elected in his constituency. He has said, no, I do not want to be a prime minister. But if Macron decides to look for what would one what could call a technocratic government, a government of of seasoned um, seasoned politicians who may not have immediate political ambitions, but who know how to govern, he could be a good candidate. Another name that has been floated around is Raphael Glucksmann, who's the head of the Socialist Party in the European Parliament, who's very much a pro-Atlanticist. He's very much on, on Macron's foreign policy line and seen as a moderate leftist. He could be a potential candidate, although he is in the European Parliament now. Other names which are surfacing is a new face in, in French politics, Marine Tondelier, who is from the Green Party, a, a very young, very charismatic politician who really come to the surface in these elections. But there is a big unknown. Um, France is going into, you know, we're having the Olympics in Paris very, very soon. Gabriel Attal, the current prime minister, might stay on as a sort of caretaker because it, I, my bet is it will take a number of weeks for the prime minister to actually be agreed upon. This is going to be uh, the, the, the real work's going to start now.